Welcome to 3D Flow Academy. This video tutorial is focused on the photo consistency mesh filter. The photo consistency based mesh optimization will adjust the triangle positions to maximize the photo consistency of their reprojection. You may run this filter directly when reconstructing a mesh or after a mesh has been reconstructed. It is worth noticing that this is not a three dimensional only filtering. Instead, it's a powerful photogrammetric algorithm that can help you recover additional details or help you obtaining a low-poly mesh while preserving the details. The photo consistency based mesh optimization is run on many presets by default, but you might add subsequent run of the filtering to achieve better results based on your specific needs. Among the different parameters you can tweak, the most important is the image resolution, as it controls the resolution scales of the images that will be used internally by the photo consistency algorithm. When you have a good geometry in the reconstructed mesh to begin with, it's advised to keep a high resolution in the photo consistency mesh optimization, more than 50%, while if you have a low quality mesh as input, you should keep a lower resolution. Resolutions close to 100% should be used only with a perfect control environment, as otherwise you might introduce pixel level noise from the input images. We usually deal with three scenarios. Mesh with noise, high quality images, Mesh with noise, low quality images. Good mesh, high quality images. You can find our suggested photo consistency settings for these cases over at 3dflow.net. Let's see an example. Consider the following mesh, which clearly shows a low detail level as well as noise distributed throughout the surface. Since the pictures taken were of good quality, these results can be summarized with the mesh with noise, high quality images scenario. Using the scenario suggested settings, including the optional steps with images at high resolution, we are able to obtain the following output. Let's see a common error. The initial mesh has too many imperfections that require a low resolution analysis in order to be corrected. Applying the photo consistency directly to high resolution images, as in the case of good mesh high quality images, would yield the following worse result instead. Let's see another example. We have already reconstructed the mesh and applied the photo consistency during its reconstruction, but its poly count is very high. While we could use a manual filter, decimation or retopology, a better result can be achieved by increasing the target reprojection area while decreasing the resolution. You may also decrease the maximum vertex count in order to make sure Zephyr does not exceed your desired threshold. The resulting mesh is still high quality, with more details were needed, and yet with a much lower poly count. Please note that in some presets, for example the fast ones, the photo consistency based mesh optimization is disabled, however you may always enable it from the advanced or custom settings. Keep this in mind, especially if you are not using an NVIDIA card. The photo consistency step is very computation intensive and an NVIDIA card is extremely recommended for this step. Let's quickly have a look at the other photo consistency filters parameters. Maximum vertex count, as previously explained, is an upper limit to the generated vertex count. The real behavior over the vertex count is controlled by the target reprojection area and resolution. Number of neighbor cameras. For each camera, a number n of neighboring cameras are chosen that will compose the pairs that the photo consistency algorithm will use. Increasing this parameter will increase the final accuracy as well as increase the computation time. In most cases, the results you can achieve with the default value of 4 and with higher values are very similar, since the information that can be extracted with 4 cameras is often enough to reconstruct most details of the subject. Maximum iterations of the algorithm. We suggest to leave this value on default, as the algorithm will usually converge to the optimal solution. You may decrease this value, however, if the starting mesh already has a very good detail, for example, if the input mesh is the output of a previous photo consistency step. This parameter should be decreased only in special cases, for example for preliminary tests or if you don't need a high accuracy. The convergence relative tolerance controls when the minimization algorithm should stop as the solution is converging. More iteration will still yield a very similar result. Increasing this value too much might stop the algorithm too early, thus yielding lesser details. Decreasing this value too much exposes you to the risk of having too many iteration, up to the max iteration values. Although decreasing this value will not worsen results, it will increase computation times. 
The target reprojection area controls the size that every triangle will try to obtain at the end of the photoconsistency process. Given a triangle, its final reprojection area in pixels to the nearest camera will tend to get near to this specified value. Lowering this value will make a denser mesh. The final mesh will then have a variable level of detail, with a higher vertex count corresponding to those areas that are viewed by the nearer cameras. In most cases, the default value will work well. In case you are dealing with a mesh that is already very good, for example one that has already finished a photoconsistency step, this parameter can be decreased to try and extract even more details, while it can be increased in case of noisy meshes and low quality images. If the hierarchical subdivision value is greater than zero, the photoconsistency algorithm will be applied more times in a sequential way, automatically adjusting the image resolution and the iteration number. This means that the same results can be obtained by running the same algorithm multiple times with different and appropriate settings. When the use symmetric pairs option is enabled, the algorithm will analyze each pair of cameras A, B in a symmetric way A towards B, B towards A during each iteration. If this option is not selected, the analysis will be interleaved in between each iteration, A to B when odd, B to A when even. Usually, the final level of details is very similar regardless of the value of this option. We suggest to leave this option unchecked as it will cut the computation time in half or to use it only for very small datasets. High frequency gain. By raising this parameter you will get more sharp details, but you will also likely introduce some noise. Depending on the desired kind of output, you can raise this internal parameter. Thank you for watching and don't forget to join our 3D Flow Academy Facebook group to vote for the next video tutorial.